What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another episode of PS3 Tutorials. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to downgrade your custom firmware to a previous version. So why would you want to downgrade your custom firmware? Well, basically, it gives you access to more features right now because 4.85 custom firmwares, there's only kind of light custom firmwares. They're not as feature rich as some of the 4.84 custom firmwares like Rebug Rex. And since there's no 4.85 version of Rebug Rex yet, you might want to go back down to 4.84 Rebug Rex to, to get access to those features. Um, if you want to convert to a DEX console, which I'll be covering in the next episode, then there's not really any DEX custom firmwares available for 4.85 yet either. You're better off going down to 4.84 and installing a 4.84 DEX custom firmware. And also for installing Linux as well, you have to be on like 4.81. Um, and then you can update once Linux is installed up to 4.84. So there's plenty of reasons to downgrade your custom firmware. Now, if I go into the system settings and check my um, system information, you can see I'm on 4.85. I'm currently on Rebug Lite. And downgrading is not as simple as upgrading your custom firmware. With upgrading your custom firmware, which I covered a few episodes back, all you have to do is put a new custom firmware on your USB stick and install the system update, basically. It's as simple as that downgrading not so much you'll get an error if you try and do that if you try and put a an older custom firmware on your usb stick and try and just do the system update you'll get an error saying the data is corrupted so what we have to do is we have to enable qa flags in order to downgrade our custom firmware so if you're on any rebug custom firmware you can do that using the rebug toolbox by simply going down to uh, rebug toolbox. I'm going to delete this rebug toolbox because I'm not sure if it's the the one for rebug light or the one for rebug rex because I may still have the rebug rex one for 4.84 installed so you got to watch out for that so I'm going to go to the package manager install package files system storage and install the rebug toolbox that comes with the custom firmware that way I know it's the right um, rebug toolbox for my custom firmware so then I'm going to go ahead and run it Okay, and then once you're on Rebug Toolbox, you're going to head over to um, the Utilities section and toggle QA Flag, which is currently disabled. If you change that to Enabled, then you're good to go. Then all you have to do is restart the system. So just go to Restart System and just do a full on-off cycle. Okay, so signing back in after the restart. If you want to check to make sure that that QA flag has successfully been enabled, go back into Rebug Toolbox and just check to make sure it's enabled. So back in here, we go back to Utilities, and as you can see, it's still enabled. So that means we're good. So now we can just exit back to the XMB. Okay, so now that you've confirmed that the QA flags are enabled, we can go ahead and install a older custom firmware. Now, if you're not on a Rebug custom firmware, obviously you won't have the Rebug toolbox to enable the QA flag, but what you can do is use a homebrew app to do it instead, which I'll also show you how to do right here. So if we go over to the computer here, what you're going to want to do is download the custom firmware of your choice. So in this case, for me, it's going to be 4.84 Rebug Rex. So if I select that option from rebug.me, I'll link it in the description, then scroll down to the very bottom of the page, which is where the downloads are. Okay, so when you download Rebug Rex, you'll get the zip file that will download. Inside that zip file, there's a text file that contains the actual download link to the pup file. So you're gonna need to copy that download link into your browser, download the pup file, and then you're good to go. Okay, so then you're gonna to want to grab yourself a USB stick and make sure that USB stick is of course FAT32 format, so file system should be FAT32. If it's not, back up any stuff that's already on the drive and then reformat it by right clicking and going to format and selecting FAT32 as the option. If your USB drive is too large, you won't have FAT32 as an option, so you'll have to um, either resize it into like a smaller partition and format that in FAT32, or just get a third party formatting tool to format it in FAT32. So once you've got your drive in FAT32 format, you're going to go ahead and create a new folder in the root of the drive called PS3 in uppercase. Inside that folder, you're going to create another folder called update also in uppercase. And then inside that folder, you're going to copy the pup file inside. And then you can also verify the hash just to be safe if you use onlinemd5.com. All you have to do is um, copy the file from the USB drive 
into online MD5 and that'll calculate the MD5 hash. And then you can right click, rename the file, copy this MD5 hash that's in the file name, copy that, paste it in. And if it's ticked, which means it's the same, then you're good, you know it's not corrupted. It shouldn't be corrupted anyway. Normally I don't do that, but you know, if you wanna be safe, then you can uh, take that extra precaution. So then you're gonna rename the file name to just ps3updat.pup and now you're good to go. So all we have to do now is plug this in and basically do the update. Now, for the people who um, are on a different custom firmware and we're not able to um, enable the QA flags in Rebug Toolbox because you're on a different custom firmware that doesn't have Rebug Toolbox. So for you guys, there is another option, which is a homebrew app. So if you head over to store.brewology.com, so just scroll through the homebrew apps until you find um, QA Toggle Habib. So if you go ahead and select this and download it, this will allow people on other custom firmwares to toggle the QA flags. So it's a very small package file. So if you want to go online when you're on an older firmware, you're also going to want Sen Enabler. There you go. So Sen Enabler. So download the latest version of, uh, of Sen Enabler. I guess I'll just go for the proper version rather than the beta right now, uh, just in case. So there we go. So if we download that, and if we just copy those two homebrew apps to the root of our USB stick, and then we can unplug our USB stick and plug it into the PS3. Okay, so back on the PS3, if you enabled the QA flag in Rebug, then you can just do the system update now from storage media. If you're on a different custom firmware though, you still need to enable the QA flag. So we're gonna go to game, package manager, install package files, um, of course standard, which is from the USB drive and then select our Habib QA toggle, and that's installed. So then all you wanna do is run uh, toggle QA flag, and when you run it, it will reboot the system. I'm not gonna do this because my QA flag's already enabled, so if I toggle QA flag with this homebrew app, it's just gonna disable it. It toggles it, so if it was off, it'll turn it on. If it was on, it'll turn it off. Um, so, you know, for you, if you're not on rebug, then it'll be off, it'll be disabled, so just run toggle QA flag, that'll enable it, it will go to a black screen and then it will put you back to the XMB again. And the only way to check if you're not on Rebug, uh, if it's actually toggled successfully, is to head over to settings and hover over network settings. And then you have to input the following button combination, which is L2, R1, R1, R2, L3, and D-pad down. So it's kind of an awkward combination to try and do L3 and D-pad down at the same time, but you have to, uh, Hold all those buttons down at the same time. And as you can see, you'll get this popping up. You'll get uh, Eddie Viewer, Debug Settings, and Install Package Files. And that means that uh, the QA flags have been enabled. If you have these Debug Settings, Install Package File, and Eddie Viewer, then you're good to go. So now we can install the update. So we just go to System Update, Update via Storage Media. There we go, 4.84. Um, and then we just do the System Update, and it shouldn't corrupt this time. So just to be clear, if you're on certain versions of Rebug, like Rebug Rex, um, and you try and do that button combination over the network settings, you probably will not get those three extra options coming up because you already have the debug settings option already there, so it doesn't do it. But like I said, you can tell if QA flags is enabled on Rebug just by going into the Rebug toolbox and checking that QA flags thing is enabled, and then you're good. It's just for other custom firmwares like Rebug Lite and other custom firmwares that are not Rebug where you can do that button combination over the network settings. And if those three options pop up, then that means you, the QA flags have been enabled and you can install the custom firmware. Or you could just attempt to install the custom firmware anyway. And if you get the error saying that it's corrupted, then you know that the QA flags are not enabled. And of course, if you are having any problems doing the update through the XMB, you can of course do it in safe mode as well by holding down the power button, waiting until the console beeps twice, and then you can let go of the power button, it'll boot you into safe mode. And then if you go down to option number six, which should be system update, just select that and then go through the normal system update process through safe mode. Um, and then that should hopefully resolve any issues that you're having. Just bear in mind, if you get an error saying that the data is corrupted and you know there's like an error code that's like eight, eight something, um, then that's probably because the QA flags have not been enabled. So 
you'll have to go back and re-enable them using Habib or using Rebug Toolbox. So, so here we are back after the update. And if I go to System Settings, System Information, blah, 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 as you can see, we're now down to 4.84. So we have successfully downgraded to Rebug Rex Custom Firmware. As you can see there, we've got Custom Firmware Tools. Everything's here. If I go here, we should have the debug settings. Yep, showing up. So you can see we are on a different custom firmware because Rebug Lite does not have the debug settings just here uh, at the bottom. We're now on Rebug Rex 4.84. Okay, so at this point, um, if you want to go online, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so connecting online. So if I just try and connect online right now on 4.84, if I go to my online profile, and then PlayStation Network, sign in, sign in. And there you go. You can see it says a system software update is required. So it wants me to update to the latest firmware in order to sign in and play it on PSN because I'm not on the latest firmware anymore. But we can still connect. So if we install the app that I showed earlier that we put on the USB drive. So if I go into install package file standard and install SEN enabler, just go ahead and run that. I've, I showed this off, of course, before in my video on connecting to PSN in the first place. So if we run this... Okay, so once you're on Send Enabler, what you're going to do is head over to Send slash PSN Options, go down to Custom Spoof, select 4.85. It's going to be on Auto by default, and you could probably leave it on Auto and it would be fine. Um, but, you know, if you want to be 100% sure it's going to select 4.85, just go left on the d-pad once and that should be the latest firmware that it supports which right now is 4.85 so then go to custom spoof at the top select x and then say yes and that will go ahead and spoof it to 4.85 so once it's done it'll say do you want to reboot if you don't reboot your ps3 system will be uh, unstable so <laughs> yes you want to reboot okay so now that we have rebooted we should be spoofed to 4.85 now, of course, it's not going to show up as 4.85 if you go into system settings and uh, system information. It's still going to say, oh, it does, 4.85. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Um, I thought it did not change the actual number there, but it does. Okay, so yeah, we're definitely spoofed to 4.85. It does show up there in the system settings. Okay, so now we can connect to PSN. Again, take all the precautions that you would normally take when connecting to PSN. There is a chance of you getting banned faster because you're on an older firmware and you're spoofing. Um, and Sony might, you know, be able to detect that you're still not technically on 4.85 even though you're spoofed. Um, so the chances of you getting banned faster is it's a possibility. I'm not sure by how much or if it's really going to make that much of a difference at all. Especially if you're only going like one point. If you're on 4.84, you're just spoofing one version higher to 4.85. Maybe if you're on like 3.55 and you're spoofing to 4.85, it's going to um, attract some attention. But uh, hopefully, not, hopefully not. So I'm not sure if it really makes any difference. Um, but I thought I would let you guys know so you can make that decision for yourselves. But um, yeah, so all we have to do now is just go through the normal steps so we can do... I think it's R2 and triangle at the same time, which will remove uh, system calls, custom firmware, syscalls and stuff to be safe to go online. You can do that instead of using PSN patch. You can also unload webman mod as well uh, after you've done that by doing uh, L3, R3 and R2 at the same time. So hold those buttons down and wait for it to come up saying webman unloaded there you go so now we're pretty much safe to go ahead and connect online so we're going to sign in i've accepted your policy terms there we go now i'm signed in so there we go we're now connected to psn while on an older custom firmware we're not on the latest firmware but we're spoofing to the latest firmware so that's how you downgrade your custom firmware and how to still be able to connect to psn after you've downgraded so hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next videos. I know I've been spacing these videos out way too long and that's just 
bad timing for me making this series because 4.85 came out and then custom firmwares have, haven't fully developed. We haven't got 4.85 rebug Rex. I was kind of waiting for that to come out, but it never came out. Um, so instead of waiting, I'm not going to wait any longer. So that's why I've done this video here to show you how to downgrade because in the next video, I'm going to show you how to convert from CEX to DEX and some of the benefits of that. And then we'll from there, we'll go on and install Linux because it's easier to install Linux on a DEX console. So those are the next few videos. So converting CEX to DEX in the next video, and that will be coming out soon. Um, I'm not, don't worry, it's not going to be out months in the future. It's going to be soon, um, you know, within the next few days. And then I'm also going to do a follow-up video to that, which is going to be installing Linux. And that's quite a big, long um, complicated process but I'll walk you through it step by step it'll be a long tutorial but we'll get through it and we'll get Linux up and running on the PS3 as well so those are the next two videos in the series that are coming up very soon so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video